Thanks to Printify for sponsoring today's video. More about them later in the video. Let me tell you, you guys have some amazing questions when it comes to everything that goes into running a print on demand business. There are just so many different moving parts to this. So tons of questions arise all the time. And in today's video, I'm taking those most commonly asked questions that I get all the time and doing my best to give you a really good answer based on my own experience running a print on demand business. Some of these answers differ a little bit from what some other people might tell you here on YouTube or other platforms. Some of them might be a little bit of a different take, maybe a little controversial. We shall see. If you want to hear my honest response to seven of the most commonly asked questions that I hear all the time, keep on watching. And if you want more opportunities to ask me questions like this or just see more behind the scenes of what goes on in my own print on demand business, make sure you are following along on my Instagram account. There you'll be able to find more tips and information. And I do my best to answer almost every single DM that comes my way. So if you do have questions or want to get a hold of me, Instagram is a great place to do that. Now let's get on with all of those questions you guys ask. Right away, we are starting off with kind of a really controversial one, but this is something that I love talking about. And that is, which is the best print provider to integrate with your Etsy account to be able to sell print on demand? Now, there are so many different companies that are able to integrate with your Etsy account to help you sell t-shirts, tumblers, mugs, tote bags, any print on demand product that you want to sell on Etsy, there is a place to do that for you. Now, I have talked so many times about why I love selling on Etsy. There is just a huge market and it is a great place to be able to make tons of profit and sales on print on demand. So I can't recommend selling on Etsy enough, but when it comes to picking the right production partner that you are going to pair with your Etsy account, there are a lot of things to think about. You have to first think about price. This is one of the biggest things that is going to affect your business. So if you're going with a production partner that their items are just priced way too high, that means you're going to have to transfer the cost onto the customers. And sometimes that prices a lot of people out of buying your items. And then the next thing you need to think about is their production time, their turnaround time, how reliable their shipping is. Those are really important factors because if you don't have good production time, you can't give them a good estimate. That is going to lead to more complaints, more requests for returns, things not getting there in time, and you don't want to deal with that. And you also really want to look at their quality, the quality of all of the products that they sell, as well as the quality of the printing. So sometimes two different production partners, they will sell the same brand of item, but they are all going to print things differently. So you want to find some place you can really rely on the quality of the items that they're making. And then the last thing that is super important to me is if you want to sell more than just one type of product, so more than just t-shirts, more than just tumblers, you want to find a place that has many different items. You probably have heard me talk about my production partner before, and that is because I have loved and used them for a long time, and that is Printify. So Printify is sponsoring today's video, but the reason I have worked with them for so long and I love when they partner with me on videos is because I use them long before that. Now I have tried out many other production partners and I really just don't think that you can beat Printify's price. You can't beat their turnaround time. It is some of the fastest that I've seen. Their quality is really unmatched. They work with so many different manufacturers that all have really great quality that they can stand behind. Their customer service is wonderful. If you do ever have any problems with the printing, with the shipping, orders being wrong, which is very, very rare, they are going to do their best to rectify it for you so that the customer gets the best service possible. And another thing that I love with Printify is because they have more than 800 products, they have so many different types of vendors on one platform. You just have to create one account that you're integrating with Etsy and you can sell all those different items. So if you went with some other place that maybe had a little bit of a smaller selection of products, you might have to find a vendor and link to your Etsy account for jewelry. You might have to find one for tumblers, a different one for shirts. So you're managing all of these different accounts. But if you are integrated with Printify, you can do everything from one spot. All the orders are going to come through there and be fulfilled there. I'm approached by other print manufacturing companies all the time to do sponsorships and to work with them. But since I can't really stand behind them, that's why I love partnering with Printify because I truly do use them in my own business. And if you're looking for a production partner to integrate with Etsy or you're looking for a new place to try, I definitely recommend them. I will have all of their information linked down below in the description to 
get started. And I have a full walkthrough tutorial that is literally going to take you step by step through everything you need to fill out in order to get your account integrated. It should take you no time at all. Now, the next question I'm getting from you guys all the time is whether you should be targeting trending designs or evergreen designs. I talked a little about this before, but my answer generally is going to depend on where you are in your print on demand journey, especially if you're selling on someplace like Amazon where you are trying to tear up quickly and be able to have more slots that you can sell stuff in. I think targeting trends for the beginning of your print on demand business is a good strategy. While those designs might not sell long term, if you can get some really quick sales that are going to help you make those first 10 or 25 sales and get you in to those higher tiers, that is a great strategy. However, trending designs is not what builds a really sustainable print on demand business. If you are looking for more of a long term strategy or you're selling on someplace like Etsy or Redbubble where you're not limited to how many products you can upload, I would definitely start to try to target evergreen designs. While trending designs, sometimes you post one, it takes off, you get hundreds of sales in a single week for just that one design. A lot of times that's very short lived. So it might be trending for a couple months if you're lucky, but a lot of times it will fizzle out. Now with evergreen designs, this could sell month after month, year after year. You're probably not going to be getting hundreds of orders for this one specific product in a single day, but you might find that you're getting multiple orders a month, month after month. So if you really want to build up your print on demand business, I definitely would be targeting those evergreen designs that are never going to go out of style or stop trending. As a rule of thumb, I have kind of put these parameters for myself on what I focus on in posting my different designs. Even though trending designs aren't really going to sustain your business in the long term, I don't think you should ignore them completely. So I typically will post about 20 to 25% of my designs for trends. A lot of times one of these will take off and it's really nice to get that extra boost in income that you might have just missed out on if you completely neglected trends. And then I focus about 50% of on my designs on just evergreen things. This could be things for people like moms and dads, for certain professions, for different hobbies. None of those are constrained to a time or a time of the year. And then that last 25% is something that is really important and that is going to be focusing on holiday evergreen designs. So this is kind of a combination of both trends and evergreens because holidays happen every single year at the same time this makes them kind of an evergreen design but they are really only confined to a couple months that people are looking for those items so you should really be focusing on having all three of those types of things in your store unless you are just getting started on a place like amazon now the next thing i get asked all the time is what is the best design tool for a print on demand business? There are so many different design suites out there. There are really, really advanced suites that can do so many things all the way down to super, super simple design suites that don't do a lot, but are really easy to use. Now, there are several that I have used across my time on print on demand, but I've kind of narrowed it down to the two that I am going back to time and time again. Now, the first one is Canva. This is where I really got my start on print on demand. You're probably very familiar with Canva. It's kind of an all-in-one, really simple to use graphic design platform that you can make everything from cards to posters, t-shirt designs, you name it, you can do it on Canva. It is super beginner friendly. And if you are doing more than just designing for products that you're selling on print on demand, this definitely could be a good option for you. But sometimes you're a little bit limited in the types of things that you can do for your designs. So if you want to get a little bit fancier, use some other really cool things that you're seeing on these trending t-shirts. Sometimes you're not able to do that quite as well on Canva. And then it comes to the design platform that I've really been using a ton lately, and that is Kittle. Unlike Canva, Kittle is specifically made for print-on-demand sellers in mind. They have so many of the same features as Canva. They're again, super easy to use, but a few things that make it really, really worthwhile for me, and I think is now my first choice for print-on-demand sellers, 
is one, they have a huge library of templates that you can use for designing t-shirts, tote bags, you name it. They probably have a template for it. So you can simply search something like retro groovy design and they have hundreds of templates for you to look through that you can simply just take and then change the text, change the colors. You can do whatever you want to make it your own, but they have great places to start. So if you're not a super skilled designer, this gives you everything you need to make really professional designs super quickly. And they also have the capability to do some more professional type design features. So you have more abilities to kind of warp text. You can add more layers. You can do really cool things here on Kittle and you have full access to sell any of the designs that you create on any print-on-demand platform and they've made this abundantly clear. They also have a place to make mock-ups and they recently introduced new AI features that you can generate AI images to create new stickers, t-shirt designs. So they are really are an all-in-one package for print-on-demand sellers in mind. I can't recommend them enough. I will definitely have them linked down below. The next question that I am hearing all the time from people asking is, if you are a seller on Amazon, why am I not tearing up? Maybe you're in tier 10, you've made your 10 sales months ago, and you are still stuck in that low tier. They're not moving you up when they start tearing everybody up. No one really has a crystal ball where they can see exactly what Amazon is thinking. And it seems like things with them are always changing, but there are a few things that I think might be causing this that we can look to if you're not tearing up. So the first one is there are times when Amazon kind of just goes silent on tearing people up. A lot of times we'll see in Q4, they just kind of put a hold on tearing up for low accounts and high accounts all together. Now, this is really frustrating to hear that even if you make a bunch of sales, you might just have to wait several months, but sometimes that's how it is. Several years ago when I got started on Amazon, this actually happened to me. I made my first 10 sales for Amazon within a week, but then I was stuck in tier 10 for a couple months because they kind of put a hold on tearing people up during the holidays. By the time I finally got it out of tier 10, I had made well over 100 sales. So then I quickly progressed through those other tiers as well after that. But it was pretty frustrating with only 10 design slots. And back then you couldn't even add those designs to other products. You were just stuck with 10 products in total. Now there are a few other reasons you might not be tearing up too. Now both of these are more like speculation, but it seems like this definitely could be the case from different anecdotal evidence that I've seen from people. But one of them is that if you have received a ton of returns for your products, that kind of can flag your account for Amazon wanting to review it and make sure that there is nothing weird going on. So if your return ratio is unusually high, this could be an indication to Amazon that you shouldn't be tiered up yet. And then the next reason you could not be tearing up is if you have had a lot of rejections, if you've tried to post different content that really violates the content policy on Amazon, I have a lot more information about all the things you can do to get yourself in trouble with Amazon here, but sometimes that can flag your account to go kind of under manual review. So sometimes that can really hold up the process and they either decide not to tear you up or to ban your account completely, or it just takes a little bit of extra time. But sometimes all of this is just up to the whims of Amazon and no one can really give you an exact answer. So sometimes if you're wondering, why am I not tearing up? Your guess is just as good as someone else's. So don't get discouraged and keep just trying to make sales and hopefully you will eventually tear up. Another question that you guys ask all the time is which is the best print on demand platform to get started on or which is the most profitable print on demand platform? Now you've probably heard me say that I am a big proponent of being on multiple different places just to give yourself the biggest chance to make sales and the most profit. But there are generally two places that I think everyone should be selling on at least one of these to be able to make the most profit and the most sales. Now the first one is going to be Amazon Merch. This continues to be my biggest platform where I make the most sales. Amazon has a huge customer base that is already looking for items on their platform. So you aren't going to have to rely on any outside traffic. It's all organic. And if you can figure out the system, you can make a ton of sales guaranteed. But the tricky part with Amazon Merch is it's on an application program. So a lot of people who apply, they do not get accepted to Amazon. There are some strategies you can take to hopefully help your chances of getting accepted. I do have a video about that here, but sometimes, especially if you're outside of the United States, Canada, some European states, it's much harder to get accepted to this program. 
So the next best option and definitely a platform that I love selling on, there is so much potential to make a ton of money, especially early on, is selling on Etsy integrated with a place like Printify. Unlike Amazon, you're not limited to how many slots you have. So you really can make as much money as you choose to on a place like Etsy. If you're willing to post 10 or 20 new listings every single day and really build your catalog up quickly, in your first month in print on demand, you can make a substantial amount of profit. Unlike Amazon or some other sites where you're super limited to how much you can make just because of how much product you can actually post. A lot of people are a little bit nervous to sell on Etsy because integrating it with a production partner one, it sometimes seems like a lot more work, and two, they're worried about managing customer service and doing returns. And I will say that I was skeptical about that at first. It took me a little longer than I would like to admit to finally be ready to sell on Etsy. But when I finally did, I realized that being with a good production partner, it really makes everything super seamless. Yes, you will occasionally have to answer a few questions and sometimes get requests for returns, but that typically is a very small percentage compared to the amount of traffic and sales you're going to make selling on a place like Etsy. So I can't recommend selling on Etsy or Amazon enough. Those are definitely the biggest money makers, I think, when it comes to print on demand. The next question that you guys are asking all the time, and this is a great one, is should you have multiple different print on demand or Etsy shops in your business? I personally do have multiple different Etsy shops, and I will tell you exactly what for in a moment. It, but generally my rule of thumb is that physical products need to go together in one shop while digital products go together in another shop. So if you want to sell different templates, if you want to sell digital downloads, you're going to make that a separate Etsy shop while your things like t-shirts, tumblers, tote bags, those all go in one shop together. A question that piggybacks right off of that is if you should have more of a niche store on Etsy or just a general store. Now I'm a big proponent for having niched Etsy stores. It really helps you create a brand and be very consistent with the types of products that customers can expect. You're able to build kind of a following, a customer base, if you just sell in one niche in one Etsy store. But I think there is a ton of merit to also having a general Etsy store. So I personally have a general store where I just put tons of different items from all different niches. This is a great place to start, but I also have several different niche stores where I'm just posting one dedicated niche and have built kind of a following around those stores. So really any of those approaches is a good idea. I just would not combine digital and physical products. The rest is kind of up to you and how you want to take your own print on demand business. The next question that I see all the time is which are the best niches to target for print on demand? So this question has so many different answers and I will share exactly my strategy for finding niches, but the rule of thumb for finding a good niche for print on demand is you want to find something with low competition, but still demand. So that means there are still people looking for it, even though it might not be as popular as some of those really big niches like teaching, nursing, being a mom. Now, finding that can sometimes be the tricky part of print on demand. So that's why I rely a lot on using research tools to be able to hunt for niches and new product ideas. I use both Merch Informer for a lot of t-shirt ideas and Sale Samurai to really help me optimize my Etsy products and find what is going to be worthwhile for me to make. So I will link both of those tools down in the description for you along with a coupon code for each of those. But there are other ways to find really good niches too. One that I always love to mention is I do a lot of niche research in my own print on demand business. And so every single week I have a newsletter that goes out where I'm sharing five of the top trendy or really popular popular niches right now that I'm finding in my own research that are going to do well and are great options for you guys to target and sending those directly to your inbox. All you have to do is be subscribed to my newsletter. It's completely free. I will again link it down below. And there are also so many different niche videos every single month that come out both on my channel and on many other channels. So if you're looking for some more ideas of amazing niches to target, watch this playlist here where I'm breaking down some of the best evergreen niches that you can target for your print on demand business. Thanks so much for watching this video and make sure you check out Printify down below in the description.